Uh, Dorothy, I cannot hear you. Okay. It's recording. Okay. So let me just uh, switch back to the camera. So thank you, everyone, and uh, good afternoon, um, perhaps good morning, or maybe even good evening to some of you. So thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, well, for us anyway. Uh, so today, uh, we will be covering some uh, modern calligraphy. Uh, we will not be going over like the basic strokes. Uh, so uh, today, we'll be focusing more on uh, layout and also um, composition. So uh, if you want to write together with me, you are welcome to do so. So yeah, let's get on with the session. Uh, let me just uh, switch my camera over to the document camera. Okay, so um, today uh, I'll be using a dotted like writing pad. Uh, it's, it's some dotted paper actually by Arodia, as you can see over here. So, but uh, you are welcome to use uh, any sort of paper uh, that you have, that you already have. <clears throat> So those who joined yesterday, uh, the content will be roughly the same. So I hope it's uh, not too uh, repetitive. So I'll also be using mostly a pencil because we are doing um, layout and composition. And um, I'll also be using um, a lot of like erasing. So that's why I have uh, chosen a pencil. So um, for my pencil, I have actually like purposely like blunted it at an angle. Uh, let me see if it can focus. So there we go. So you can see that it's blunted at an angle, but uh, you do not have to do this. So it's just um, my preference actually. So uh, next I'll also be using um, a pointed pen for later uh, for when we do inking, but uh, it also depends on um, the timing, but I hope we will be able to ink at least a one piece like yesterday. And yeah, so uh, let's jump in on the layout. So for layout, uh, there are many possibilities as um, <clears throat> you might already know. So let me just go grab another pencil. So for layouts, uh, we have uh, many possibilities as I mentioned earlier. So we have like things like left align, um, right align, and even like center align. So these are just like some of the basic types of layouts. So I won't be able to cover um, all but um, today I'll be showing you the center align um, layout and as well as uh, something else, uh, something else, a special later. So if you joined yesterday, um, you, you know, you know. <laughs> so uh, let's get on with um, picking a quote. So uh, I have um, chosen a quote, so I will write that down. Um, so the quote is, let me write it like bigger compared to yesterday, the sunset is proof that endings oh i'm going off screen can be oh that's a typo beautiful too so this quote is by bo taplin <clears throat> so let's see how we can take this and put it into like this sort of layout right here. So I will only be following loosely, um, like for example, uh, we have the baseline, header line, first the center and second the center line. <clears throat> but soon you will see that sometimes I may go beyond that and the spacing in between each um, row of words uh, may be different. So that's just like uh, my process that I use for modern calligraphy um, because uh, it's uh, less structured compared to something like copper plate, for instance. So you may see later that I'll only be following this like very loosely and I'll also be eyeballing some of the um, spacing and also um, the layout. So I'll explain as we go along. So uh, you might um, may not be like, under so you may not like understand like very much now, but uh, I'll demonstrate later. So I hope you'll be able to understand better then. So um, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, so for layouts, uh, we would like to have like ample space. So this is just um, a very old piece that I did like several years back. So let me straighten that. So you can see for this piece that the spacing, <clears throat> there's like not much like space on the right. No, sorry. There's not much spacing on the left, like compared to the right. 
So um, right now, um, I prefer like having like ample space at the sides and also the top. So one way to do that is to, let me just get that away. One way to do that is to actually like draw a border around your paper. Let me just bring that down a bit. So right now I will be using a ruler so that I can draw a square around the piece. So I'll just erase this. So I'll probably um, go like seven spaces in. And like roughly like seven to eight spaces from the edge of the paper. And as for the length, I'll just um, like draw roughly. So this sort of distance, I'm not really measuring the distance over here, but we can always like adjust it as we go along. And sometimes like with layouts, it's like more of a trial and error, I find. But you really have to experiment and see uh, what, what is working for you and um, what is not. So let me just go get my pencil. So the script that I'll be using for this layout is a slanted script, but um, using modern calligraphy. So let me just uh, position the camera a bit to the left. Okay, so for this, um, I think I would like to have about like three words for the first row. So the sunset is um, perhaps proof that because like endings is um, quite long. So I don't think I'll want to squeeze like three different words in like the second row. So the sunset is proof that endings can be, and last line, beautiful too. Okay, so let's try this um, configuration. So again, um, if you feel comfortable um, working with like a blank paper or like some grid paper, um, it's really completely up to you. But for me, I prefer like having like a dotted like guide or like a grid type of paper. So it really helps me to keep like uh, the script to be straight and not like going upwards or like maybe sometimes even curving downwards. So that's just like my preference, but um, work with which other um, method feels are comfortable to you. So the sunset is so uh, this will be like sort of my baseline for here. And as you can see, I'm following, um, sorry, I cannot really like talk and then uh, write at the same time. So please bear with me. And I think I would like to add like a very long crossbar for the T just to fill up the space over here. So let's see how that works. I think that looks, that looks fine for now. So let's go on to the second row. So I might start somewhere here. So you can always like erase and adjust things as you go along. If you find that like the centering is off for instance, So sometimes I take a step back when I'm writing to see um, how everything is looking. And if there's something that I'm not quite happy with, I might just like go in and get the eraser and just like erase and modify things. And sometimes I, I even like modify like the letter variation. 
Okay, so I think we can move on to the next line. Uh, so it's endings can be. So perhaps I'll start like somewhere closer to the edge of the border. Just like endings is quite long. Uh, we'll see. So I'm quite happy with uh, the third row as well, but I see that <clears throat> there's a bit of empty space over here. So I might just uh, lengthen like one of the letters here. So let's try lengthening a bit the T. And maybe <clears throat> I'll just shorten a bit. the lowercase f over here. So I think I'm quite happy with this. So let's just go for the balance of the quote, which is a beautiful too. So for this, I think I want to add in the capital B and not just use the lowercase b. So it's sort of like highlighting like the word. So I think I'll start somewhere here instead. So you can see how the distance between the third and the fourth row might be slightly different compared to the first and the second row. So that's uh, because I'm currently like eyeballing my layout as well. So it really depends on what sort of words you put on the row below, for instance, like uh, for instance, if um, the row below has like a lot of ascenders, so it might run into like the row above if you keep like the same distance. So this is how I try to like fit like words and stuff um, for layouts. So I won't do the crossbar first. So I'll just see how everything looks later on. Hmm. Do I want to like let this intersect? I don't know. So I just leave this for now. So I can see that the last row is actually like too much like to the left. So I will need to shift it slightly to the right. So I'll be erasing the entire row. So maybe I'll start like somewhere here instead of here. And now it might be too much to the right, uh, but let's see. Hmm. I think it's kind of fine, but I don't like how there's like a lot of like empty space now over here. So let's see how we can rectify that. I might bring it slightly up so that the space is more even in between the rows, but 
Again, it very much like depends on the quote that you are using and stuff. So let's again redo the last row. So this is just like how I approach uh, layout and also like composition. But if you have like a method that you are using that it's is working very effectively for you, you can always like stick with that. Because like if it's not broke, like don't fix it, right? So previously I started here and then I shifted here. So maybe I want to go somewhere in the middle. So with layouts, like I might change my mind like at any time, like during uh, drafting. So maybe I can shuffle on this one. Oh, that's not bad. Like I think I'm quite happy with uh, this sort of like layout right now. So let me just uh, see if I'm missing anything. So maybe I'll just change this one a little bit. And just have it like cross until just the middle part of the G. I think that's um, okay for me. So let me just uh, go back and check if I've like remembered to cross all of the T's, dotted all of the I's. So I think that's fine. So I'm quite satisfied with like this like center align like layout. And right now I'll just like proceed um, to add in like the author of the quote. So usually I like to do that in like block letters. So but you can always like do it in like uh, your handwriting, for instance, or like calligraphy. So anything that works for you is fine. So this is just like my preference. So I'll just like make it so that it's about like five mm which is like the distance between like the two dots. So yeah, something like this. And uh, this is it for the first quote. So you can see how it's like confined within the borders, but even if it <clears throat> just like extends like slightly like out of the border, it's fine also, but not until like say like over here. So this is what you have to keep in mind uh, when you're doing like layouts. So for this piece, um, yeah, I think I'm quite satisfied. I hope you guys are doing okay as well. So just uh, remember to type in the chat if you have any questions. Uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, we will move on to the second one. Uh, Dorothy, are there any questions? Okay. Okay, so I will move on to the second piece. Let me just uh, get a new piece of paper. So for the second layout, uh, we are going to be using uh, shapes. So today I'll be using uh, this like compass, like this like, I think it's from like my schooling days. <laughs> so um, a regular pencil. So let me just draw a circle. So you can use like all sorts of shapes, like even like squares and also like irregular shapes, which I will uh, show you a sample of a later on. So for this, um, since it's the festive season, I thought we could like add in a quote for like Christmas. And so today we'll be doing, um, let me just like write that down. So today perhaps we could do um, chestnuts, roasting on 
and open fire. So that's like nice and festive. So for this, um, I think instead of like the regular like slanted script like going this way. So I think I might like tilt it so that it goes like this way instead, like diagonally. So let me just uh, shift the camera a bit so that I will have a bit more space. So when it's, when something is like tilted like this, so you might like have your script like go like wonky a bit. So for this, I will usually like draw some lines. So let me again shift the camera so that I can like easily draw lines. So since like chestnuts is like quite long, uh, it may not fit like here, but uh, if you manage to fit, it's fine also. But uh, if you want to do a diagonal, like kind of like layout, like you can as well, if you want to follow. So I think I might have like the first line over here. And like, again, I'm just like eyeballing like the spaces in between. Uh, because like calligraphy, for modern calligraphy, we can do like bouncy, like lettering and so on. So what I mean by bouncy is like something like this, where you extend, like for example, this N, like the N is extend below the baseline and it goes up again. And for, for instance, like this H, it's extending below the baseline and going up again. So in my older work, you can see how I've like, done a lot of bouncing like almost like every single letter so back then i was very into like bounce bouncy uh letters and so on so now my calligraphy is um like quite different so if you compare it uh, today it's like not very much um a bouncy kind of like look but sometimes i do bounce the letters but um again it depends on the letters um the the structure and so on so um, i'm afraid i will be able to produce uh, like provide like a formula for where you can bounce your letters so um i feel like like these letters are all like like alive you know like it's very like changeable and so on so uh sometimes i also like eyeball things as you can see so this one goes like below the baseline and this is like slightly higher so uh, it's all true like experimentation um at least for me so yeah that's a bit about uh, that so again, I'm like kind of like eyeballing the spaces in between. So uh, if something is off, I will like go back and change it. So I left uh, a bit more space for the top for chestnuts because um, there's like the ascender uh, for H and also like the T. So which I might do something with the crossbar, uh, maybe like a simple flourish. So I left a bit more space over here. So perhaps for the next line, I will draw it somewhere here. So maybe somewhere here for now. I don't think it's parallel. Wait, let me make it parallel. They're supposed to be parallel. If not, like it looks like very weird. So let me go back and try to make it parallel. Oh wait, this is too low. Maybe something like that, but hmm. Okay, I might shift it higher. Yeah, definitely need to shift it a bit higher.
So something like that. Or maybe, yeah, let's try it this way. So this one is a bit more complicated compared to when you just like write um, horizontally. So if you have any like hacks for like diagonal kind of like scripts, um, yeah, you can just, uh, you can let me know. Because usually I just like eyeball it. Yeah, this one is not quite parallel. Just like modify this one a bit. Yeah. Okay, so let's try and fit like chestnuts into the first line. So I think it should be able to fit. Okay, so for chestnuts, uh, perhaps I want a capital C. And I think I want to make the loop for the H like higher. Or maybe we can do a flourish later. So I don't know yet. So let's keep uh, this sort of like ascender for the H for now. So even if you go like outside of the border, um, it's okay. But uh, of course, like not too much. So let's see what we can do with the ascender for the H. Maybe something like that. But I don't like how it's looking like a bit too flat for the crossbar. It's looking like it's like plateauing. So we might like, make it a nicer, like gentle kind of like curve. So maybe something like that. I'll just like keep this for now. I'll just like straighten this back so that you can see. Okay. So the next line would be roasting. I think I'll put like roasting on end. Or maybe just like roasting on. So it might not fit. So let's go for the second like row. So I'll go with like this sort of like R for the lowercase. And if needed, we can always like modify it. So if you find that during drafting, like you have like very sweaty hands and so on, and like your hand is like sticking to the paper. So you can always use like a piece, a separate piece of paper to rest your hand on so that um, the oils from the hand, like it doesn't go onto the paper. So that's one method. Or if you want, you can have, you can get, let me see where I put it. Okay. But you can get this sort of like glove that only has like fingers at the end. So these are like very cheap on eBay. So it's actually, let me show you, um, let me put it on. So you can actually like, have like this part like protect like have a barrier against the paper so you can also use like this sort of method as well so i use this when i'm working on like things like acrylic and also like glass surfaces because like i don't want it to be like smudged um, all over when i'm done with it and also like after i clean the surface i don't want like it to be like um smudgy and full of like fingerprints so let's get back to this one um, so chestnuts roasting on. So for this piece, you can see that 
my letters are not exactly like hitting like the horizontal, not horizontal, sorry, <laughs> diagonal line that I drew across the paper. So they're only like acting as a guide so that I don't like have like the letters like slowly curve upwards or like just like wonky. So maybe I'll do like a super long like crossbar for this. Let's try that out. So maybe something like that. So let's go for the rest of the letters, which is on an open fire, an open fire actually. An open fire. Oh, I think we have a question or not. I'm not sure. Okay. On and open. So since we have more space over here, I might shift the word slightly to the right. And now let's just like fill in the descender portion of the G. So sometimes I leave like letters like unfinished uh, when I don't really know like what to do with them yet. Or like if I think like they might collide with like another letter. So that's uh, really important as well. Or maybe like this G can go somewhere here. So let's leave it like that first and um, I'll see later on if um, I would like to change it back to the previous um, G or not. So right now we will go for the final word, which is fire. So I think I can use like the ascender portion for the F to fill in like the space over here. Or maybe I can use another different variation of the lowercase r. So let's see how this goes. So let's do something for the lowercase e at the end. Like maybe I will put in like a simple flourish. So sometimes like with like circle um, or like anything with shapes um, type of layouts, so sometimes I will just like erase the parts that have like gone out. Like for example here, like normally what we'll do is it will extend outside over here. So sometimes I'll just like erase like this part so that it looks like disjointed. So that's another kind of like look that you can um, do when you're working with shapes. So for this, I don't know if I want to add in the, the entrance stroke or not. So I think I quite like that. So I'll keep this. And maybe I'll just like extend the exit stroke of the end towards the edge of the circle. So just to make it look a bit more circular. So yeah, I think it should be fine quite happy with this uh, layout. So maybe I'll just like, okay, <laughs> I said I'm quite happy, but I want to change like something again. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm sometimes very fickle minded. So yeah, that's why. So um, for the exit stroke of the R, I might extend it a little bit here. So yeah, I think I'm okay with this. Just like shift it so that you can see. Um, as for the angle of the slant, I'm not really uh, measuring, but I'm very used to doing uh, slanted scripts like such as like copper plate. So it may be about like 50 to 55. I'm, I'm not really sure. I haven't like exactly gone to measure it. But if you, uh, but if you need like slanted um, like guidelines, so by all means, like please use them because like it definitely helps um, to help you uh, with a consistent slant. 
So uh, there you have it for the circle type of like layout. So even if like this portion here is sticking out, um, I don't think it will like affect too much like the overall like circular like look of the piece. So um, perhaps we could try and like put some ink onto this. Uh, let me just go get my metallic colors. So I have like these metallic colors. Uh, these are from like the creative kinds. And I also have like these by Ines Calligraphy. So these are called like metallics. So if you know Chinese, like Mei is something like beautiful. So it's a like play on that word. So I really like that. So perhaps we can use um, something that will show up like nicely on the paper. So, hmm, which one should we use? Maybe we can go with um, alchemy, like what I used yesterday, or hmm, maybe I'll go with like red color since it's like, it has like a very Christmassy feel. So now I'll be like adding like some water to the pan. So I'm just using a regular like old paint brush. So I'll like mix it up a bit and load it at the back of my nib, as you can see. So sometimes if I load too little, like when I erase um, the pencil lines, for instance, like some of the metallic like can come off and I will need to like retouch it. So for layouts, you can always like trace over your pencil lines if you want to or not. Uh, if you don't want to, you can always like start and like do a circle like using a pencil on like your cardstock and just like follow like this kind of like layout that you've done earlier. So for this demonstration, I'll show you like how it looks like when I trace directly. So let me just check the ink flow on another piece of paper. So, so for chestnuts, uh, the ascender, I will leave it until like later on for the flourish. So now I'll try not to mess up this flourish over here. I will retrace it. So you can see how I've broken up like this like stroke over here. Now it's looking like it's like quite flat, which I'm not really happy about, but um oh oh well. It's just paper and ink, right? You can always redo. So um, for here, I think I'll add in like one additional flourish as if it extended like above outside the confines of the circle and inside back into the circle. So let's just add in something like that. So I quite like that. Um, and I think it's running out of ink, so I'll like reload it. So uh, in, for example, like Southeast Asia now, we have like so many like different makers of uh, metallic inks. Um, this is by the creative kinds, as I mentioned. Um, so other than that, um, you can also get um, and Flower Tales. Um, she's based in Singapore. I think her name is uh, Kathleen. So uh, Susian would be an expert on like metallic inks, I think. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you have so many. She has quite a collection. <laughs> so uh, other than that, we can also um, get like metallics from uh, Ines Calligraphy. Her metallics are named uh, as uh, metallics, as I mentioned earlier. 
And uh, there's also a uh, jubilant colors. So if you live like elsewhere and like, um, I think like fine tech, oh, they used to be called fine tech, now they are like Corero colors. So these are a more like accessible, like brand of metallic watercolors. Yeah, I've run out of ink again, so I will reload the nib. So there is the piece all inked. So just like put it aside to dry and you can see like roughly like the shimmer of the red. So this is something uh, that you can do well with shapes. So you can also do like something like square and like just like put like some ribbon like shapes on top to make it look like a present. So I think that'll look like very interesting for the holiday season. And uh, let me show you also another piece that I did. Let me put this slightly higher. So this is some something that you can do with like irregular shapes. So this is something I did for like Chinese New Year, like I think several years back for the year of the dog. I don't remember what year that was already, but so this is something that you can uh, use. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to put like letters inside it. For instance, you can do like something like so I'm not sure if this like qualifies as like a an actual like cartouche like kind of like shape, but it's basically like based on like ovals. So uh, if you are familiar with like copper plate, you may have seen like these like decorative like kind of like shapes around that people like use for borders and so on. So yeah, this is like something that you can also try out, and it also like helps you to okay, it's focusing now. So it can also help you with like the transition from like a hairline to a thicker like stroke and back to a hairline again. So yeah, that's something like that you can try. Okay, so uh, the next uh, layout. So I will just like put this aside to dry. So let me just go grab the other quote that I prepared. So this time perhaps we can do a, uh, Dorothy, how are we doing on like the timing? Okay, thank you. So uh, this time perhaps we could do something like a more like vertical kind of script. So basically the slant angle for this would be uh, zero. It would be an upright like kind of script and it would be, um, it would have like a more playful kind of like look to it. So the quote that I prepared is moonlight drowning out all but the brightest stars. And this is by J.R.R. Tolkien. So let's start.
start to like do the layout for this. So hmm, how should we go about this? So I might do just like moonlight for the top row, the, the top line, and then maybe drowning out all, or maybe moonlight drowning out all but the brightest stars. So at the same time, I want to make it look balanced. Um, hmm. Still contemplating, um, so maybe. So let's go with moonlight and then drowning out all for the second line. And we'll see how that goes. So for moonlight, so I'll just like start here. So I think the spacing might be off for this one once I finish it. So I think I might just shift it over to the left a bit. So instead of here, I'll start like somewhere like closer to the left uh, edge of the paper. So for this piece, I will not be doing like a border because I expect it to be like straight down like that. But uh, you can if you want. So actually, I'm going to lower like the G so that it doesn't look like it's like floating and going like up, up, up. So now let's just have something like this for the ending. Um, like this one seems to be getting in the way of like where the, the dot on the eye might be so I'll shorten it a bit um, yeah something like that so for layout so for me it's uh, basically like me trying to fit in like the ascenders into like the negative spaces in between so just like a puzzle so next would be drowning out. So since this line might be a bit longer, so I'll probably like start somewhere here. But we'll see. So it's already like running into the beginning part of the M. So I might just make it look like that for now. Yeah, I don't like how it's looking like very angular over here, so I'll redo this. So I'll add in a bit of a bounce for the W, the lowercase w. And I already see like some potential issues with like the G over here. Or maybe not if I like just like dodge it and make it slightly lower. <laughs> so let's redo the G. So maybe something like that. Um, yeah. 
So I don't think I'll follow like the same like kind of like flourish for the crossbar. So I think I'll just like keep it simple, just like that. So I'm also at the same time trying to like balance out um, the whole quote. So the next line would be all but the brightest stars or yeah. So sometimes I do these like scribbles, like kind of like, um, like writing, but actually not writing so that I can see like where everything will go. So I think for this one would be So let's go with all but the on the next line. So there's an issue with the lowercase t over here so if i do like a crossbar so i don't like like how it's like intersecting with like so many parts like the t the stroke on the t the main stroke on the t is also like intersecting with the lower part of the g and then the crossbar is like intersecting at like these points so i try to make it not like look like so busy so one way you can like modify things is to like make like certain strokes like placed a bit lower and so on and also sometimes like change the size of your letters so let's see how to manage this one so i think i might shift this a bit to the left So just slightly to the left, I think uh, should be able to help. So for if you have like double letters like this, like a double L, so I try to make it like look slightly different. So as you can see for this, like it's hitting like this line. And for the second L, it's like placed like slightly higher. So that's what you can do as well. So actually, now that I look back at the first line, I can see that this line has like less bounce, bounciness compared to like these two. So I might go in and change a bit of this. We, we have a question. Okay. When would you consider changing what sizes or mixing different font styles within one piece? Um, when would I consider changing the sizes? So, what sizes or mixing different font styles? Okay. So for in terms of the sizes, um, I would really it would really depend on like the type of quote because like no two quotes are the same. So um, for me like there's no exact formula um for that. So usually I would just like pencil it out and see um where I can like change things up a bit. So sometimes like for instance um for instance like there's a word. Like say, um, hmm. let me see what other word I can think of. So like maybe a word like better for instance. So for this word, like there's an ascender. So if you're trying to do like something like a bouncy kind of like, like script style, you can use like the ascender for the B like to make it like bigger and like exaggerate it. So for instance, it would be something like this. So this is for like bouncy, like kind of like styles. So I hope um, that is like kind of like what you're expecting for the answer, I'm not sure. So for the E, usually I would like make it a bit smaller. So for bouncy uh, letters, um, it's not like like this is big, this is small, this is big, this is small. So um, for me, it's not really like that way. So it really depends on the letters that you have also. So for this, 
there's a double uh, letter. So for double letters, I'll usually make them like at different, um, maybe the heights will be the same, but one would be placed like slightly higher above. So sometimes like the placement of this, it can like create like the illusion that something is bigger than the other, for instance. But yeah, it really also depends on like the letters that you have. So for R, um, I tend to like to do like this variation, but that's also one that I used to use like very, very frequently like last time, which looks like the cursive like kind of um, R, if you're familiar with like cursive writing. So for the cursive R, there's like a, li a little like loop over here. So I would like make use of the loop over here and like make it bigger. So that kind of like makes it look like this is like much bigger than this one. So actually it is bigger. So yeah, it really depends on the placement of the letters, for instance. So uh, if you have like words like without ascenders, so that one is a bit tricky. For me, for like bouncing letters, for instance, uh, what would be a word without any ascenders at all or descenders? Um, still thinking, um, hang on. Okay, so um, cinnamon. Okay, thank you, Eugene. So for cinnamon, so for the word cinnamon, um, since there's like no like ascenders or descenders that you can exaggerate, so I'll just like usually like change the sizes instead. So for instance, um, oh. So in this case, it's, I'll make like these two the same size for now and see how it goes. And this one will make it a bit like tinier, but I'll also like extend the underturn at the exit stroke of the A. And for M, uh, what I really like to do is to extend like the overturn of this and make it like higher so that it looks like bigger. And also the same thing goes with, okay, the distance is I think like quite large. So, so this is what I normally do like with words that have like no ascenders at all. I just like take certain parts of the letter such as like the overturn for instance and like just bring them up higher. So yeah, that's how I change like the sizes first of all. So in terms of like mixing like different scripts, um, I don't tend to mix a lot of different scripts for my uh, modern script. So even if I mix, it's just like adding like things like block letters, for instance. So I'll show you a piece that we did yesterday. I'm not sure if it's here or not. Oh yeah, it's, it's here. So uh, this is a piece that we did yesterday. Flowers take time to grow and so do I. So this is where I incorporated some of the block letters, as you can see for take and two. Um, but other than that, like if you're doing like more like traditional like calligraphy script, like copper play and Spencerian. So um, it is possible to mix like those um, styles, but you really have to know like, I guess like it really depends on the words that you have together, the type of quote and so on. So um, you can also mix like things like broad edge and also like um, pointed pen. So Susian does that really well. So Susan, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can have a look at her Instagram also for like some inspiration. So I don't really have an answer for like exactly when to mix like two different script styles, but yeah, it really depends on your composition. Uh, there's like quite a number of factors like come in, which are, can come into play as well. So yeah, I hope that um, answers um, your question kind of. Thank you. So uh, let's get back to this one. It's already three o'clock. So yeah, we have some more time, I guess. So um, as I was saying, I would like to add like more bounce to this one in order to match like the ones below. So let's just put the O higher up. 
Okay, so maybe I'll like forgo the loop on this O. And this one, I think I can place it a bit higher. And maybe just like extend this one lower, but this one looks very weird. So I'll just like redo it. So yeah, we have like incorporated a bit of like movement, a bit of a sense of movement. At least it's better than um, previously, I guess. And maybe I'll change like this one also. So just something like that. You can always like improve on it when you start like to ink it. So this is just like acting as like a, a guide. So um, moonlight drowning out all but the brightest stars. So Or maybe not. So add in the underturn portion for this one. And now it looks like it's falling over. So ooh, let's make it more upright. Okay. But the so this way we have like avoided like colliding with the G. So these are just like some of the things you can keep in mind when you are making like layouts. So for here, I will take like this opportunity to like connect the crossbar with the like ascending loop of the H. And this one maybe we'll keep it like super short for this one. Okay. So but the brightest stars. So I think I'll start. Okay, somewhere here. So maybe I'll try something where I'm not like connecting the lowercase t to the next letter. So maybe you can do something like that. I think I'll make the loop a bit bigger. No, kind of like that. And maybe I'll have the crossbar like intersect with the like this portion of the loop, something like that. So I think this part is like jutting out a bit. So I think it I might like bring this one back like maybe like five millimeters or something. So they'll look more balanced. So yeah, but other than that, I think uh, we are done with um, this layout with like the vertical, like kind of like script style. So I would, again, I bring this one slightly to the left so that it doesn't look like it's like out of balance. But other than that, I think it's fine. I'm quite satisfied with this one. So yeah. You can like ink it if you want at this point, or you can also like just transfer it to a separate like cardstock and like use this sort of like layout. And yeah, I think I'm. That's all that I have uh, for you today. So I hope everyone is doing okay. Anyone has questions for Pui Yi? Or you want to show her what you've done? You want to show? Yes. Copy, fully copy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you so much for showing your work, everyone. Thank you, Pretty, for sharing. And if you are too shy to share it, uh, you can um, share it later if you want. Ah, or you can tag her. She's Owl and Quill. And you can also tag Grateful um, out of that. Is it? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I forgot your handle. Uh, is it Grateful? Art of, <laughs> art of uh, the Art of Letters. Grateful okay. Art of Letters. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Afternoon, so good, good morning to everyone. No, good morning, good night, good evening. Hey, I managed to catch the recording, so. Um, a question.